Previously, I benched a Q6600 against a first gen i5. A few pointed out though that it would have been better to have used a last gen quad instead. And yeah, you were right. So here we have a Q9550 Core 2 quad that we'll put against this i5750S. Both will be using the same DDR3 RAM and for a graphics card we'll be using a GeForce GTX 1650. These two processors were released about two years apart from each other. Both had four cores and four threads and both hit the market for about the same price. Now this quad had far more L2 cache than this i5, however it had no L3 cache. Also, this i5 could turbo up to 3.2 GHz, and I left that enabled because as you'll see, it could only turbo a single core. Under heavy multi-threaded loads, it stayed at 2.4. Another thing that this i5 has going for it is its updated design, which includes an integrated memory controller, and that results in much higher memory speeds. Now you'll have to excuse me, I've been kind of battling a, uh, a bit of a cold for the past uh, couple weeks, so my voice is uh, coming and going, so sorry about that, but let's get on with the video. Now, first up, Passmark. The quad's final score was about 100 points higher than the i5, but as you can see, the individual test results were pretty mixed. In the memory test, the i5 pulled far ahead of the quad. In 7-zip, the i5 finished about a minute sooner than the quad, and it was able to compress about 2 to 3 megs per second faster. Now, I ran Cinebench twice. This first pass is benching the single core performance of both, and we can see the i5 pulling far ahead of the quad. Now, as we saw in Passmark, the i5 had far better single core performance, as it can boost to 3.2 GHz. However, even so, the quad really only finished about 4 minutes behind the i5. Now, the multi-threaded test, it was much closer, and at first, it looked like the quad was going to win. However, when it got to the more complex sections, the i5 pulled ahead, most likely due to that extra L3 cache. The i5 finished exactly 1 minute before the quad. Video encoding with handbrake, the i5 finished first, but only by about two minutes, and it only averaged a little over one FPS faster. Now, as I said before, back in that time, we didn't notice a huge difference between the quads and the new i5s and i7s when they first came out. In everyday use, you really don't notice those small bumps in performance. Realistically, today, you wouldn't expect a profit from mining on either of these, but regardless of that, the quad was able to compute about 100 hashes per second faster than the i5. In heaven, the i5 averaged a good 30 FPS higher than the quad. Same one for superposition, around a 30 FPS average difference. However, unlike heaven, the minimum and max for the i5 was far higher. Unreal Tournament 3, as usual, used up all cores nicely, but once again the i5 pulled ahead. This time it averaged about 50 FPS higher. But can it run Crisis? Here's the Crisis Remastered benchmark. And although it looks like the i5 is running far smoother and faster in some parts, the averages actually worked out to be fairly closer under the circumstances. The i5 scored an average frame rate of 85, while the quad managed 56. That's around a 30 FPS difference, pretty much the same as we saw before in Heaven and Superposition. Now Need for Speed Most Wanted was far closer. The i5 pulled ahead, but only by about 5 FPS on average. This game, although it technically is multi-threaded, it doesn't take advantage of everything each CPU has to offer. Portal 2, yeah, it ran great on both, but the i5 scored on average 65 frames per second higher. It's still perfectly playable in each, but hey, I mean, 65 FPS is 65 FPS. GTA San Andreas, being an older game, also runs great on both, but the i5 once again pulled ahead, this time by about 13 FPS. GTA 4, as usual, here are the settings I'm using. Both did okay and ran about the same. Although the i5 averaged about 12 FPS higher, it actually felt more responsive on the quad for some reason. I ran the benchmark. 
However, we're past the 60 FPS barrier and uh, the benchmark results aren't really that accurate. The i5 also had a higher average frame rate in GTA 5, but unlike GTA 4, the quad wasn't at all happy about this. There was far more input lag, and it really felt forced. Back then, if all I had was the Q9550, I would have been perfectly happy with this performance. It's very playable, but in comparing the two, the i5 wins. And Y Cruncher. Yeah, the i5 finished about 40 seconds sooner. Still, that's not a huge amount considering. Looking back at the results, it again shows that the i5 was often faster, but not by a huge amount. I do want to do a video comparing the Sandy Bridge to Ivy Bridge, but you can see here how an Ivy Bridge CPU only two generations newer absolutely destroys both the quad and the i5. But I think you can see here why many of us didn't really go for the newer i-series when it first came out. The performance just wasn't that much greater, and since the Core 2s could overclock so well, we just clocked them higher and went with it. So that was just a quick video update to the last comparison, and as I said, I would like to pick up a Sandy Bridge and place it against one of my uh, Ivy Bridge CPUs, so look for that in the future. I'd also like to pick up a last-gen Phenom 2 and put that against the 750 as well and you know, see how close those two are. Well, until then, have a good one, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.